navigating New York City as a young person who doesn't have people here is hard. Hands on chest, like we're laid to rest. When I was on my own, it was impossible. Yeah, I smoked meth. Like, I don't know why I keep going back and doing it. I just got to, like, completely turn off the world. We all have our little vices, things we can't help doing, even when we know we probably shouldn't. One extraordinarily powerful chemical, dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter, a chemical certain brain cells use to communicate with each other. The brain has dozens of these, but dopamine plays a special role in motivating our behavior. Something it's able to do, simply because it experiences, causes a dopamine spike, building positive associations and shaping our habits and desires. Drug addiction is a complex issue that affects individuals and societies worldwide. However, advancements in neuroscience have shed light on the underlying mechanisms of addiction, particularly the role of the dopamine pathway in shaping addictive behaviors. The concept of powerlessness in addiction recovery has long been propagated, suggesting that individuals are helpless in the face of their addiction. However, this belief can be counterproductive and hinder recovery efforts. Recognizing the potential for personal agency and empowerment is essential for breaking free from addiction. I just want to spend the night, yeah. but I don't want to spend the night acting out about the way you lie. But the shit just went awry. Me in the eye, bit me in the thigh, then begin to cry and bit the end of my bits was in this bar. So, does it come my before? must first journey back to a time when staying alive was a challenge. Unbeknownst to our prehistoric cousins, their everyday survival depended on the actions of a brain system scientists now call the mesocorticolimbic dopamine reward pathway. Found deep within the center of the brain, this pathway is activated when we encounter new stimuli that are important for our survival. The end result is a feeling of enhanced well-being. For our ancient ancestors, this meant that venturing out into dangerous territory to find a source of food or a sexual mate would lead to a release of dopamine, making our caveman here feel very, very good. Scientists first began to understand addiction as a brain disorder back in the 1950s. Doctors Olds and Milner in laboratory studies of rats found the parts of the brain affected by addiction. But then in 1994, Drs. Volkoff and Shelbert, top neuroscientists, ran PET scans of the brain that showed the effects of substance use disorders. And like other diseases, these scans showed it affected tissue function. Drugs of abuse, like alcohol, cocaine, or marijuana, work by exploiting the same pathway that has helped humans to learn and survive for generations. All addictive drugs, either directly or indirectly, modulate dopamine signaling in this pathway. Addiction also affects this area, up here. That's the prefrontal cortex, which is what separates us from other animals. And this is where decision-making and impulse control live. When drugs or alcohol are used, they activate the very same dopamine process in the survival center. And when use is repeated, that substance can hijack that part of the brain. Drug use has become a deep, compulsive need, rather than a pleasurable, impulsive desire.
what is important in terms of addiction is this, to get to the root of the problem, not the symptom, but the root. During the first stage, the drug targets a region of the midbrain known as the ventral tegmental area, or VTA, and causes the release of dopamine into a tiny structure known as the nucleus accumbens. Endorphins, our body's primary natural opioid, is also released. It is believed that the combined activation of both dopamine and endorphins is what underlies the sensation of pleasure following drug use. Some people will start using methamphetamine to help deal with things. However, it can be highly addictive and expensive. Methamphetamine is a stimulant that can be found in many forms. It speeds up the body and affects the reward pathway in the brain. This pathway uses dopamine to make a person feel good when they're doing things like eating, having fun, or hanging out with friends. Meth forces the release of dopamine in the brain to create feelings of pleasure and confidence. These feelings don't last and are usually followed by a nasty come down. To understand the complexities of addiction and its neurobiology, it's important to understand the brain's reward pathway. Information travels through the VTA area to the nucleus accumbens to the prefrontal cortex. These reward pathways make us feel pleasure and are activated by stimuli such as food, water, or sex. These same areas are also involved in addiction. Alcohol and drug use changes the way the brain works. You can see a normal functioning brain on the left and the abnormal functioning addicted brain on the right. Addiction is not due to weakness or a lack of willpower. Instead, it's a chronic disease involving changes in the brain. There, billions of nerve cells or neurons communicate through a series of signals and chemical messengers. To keep that feeling going, they take the drug or engage in the behavior again and again. Eventually, the brain changes and adapts, driving them to seek out more just to get the same feeling. That's called tolerance. You feel energized and confident, but what happens is that methamphetamine kills glial cells in your brain. These glial cells are part of the brain which allows you to plan, think clearly, and make a decision. It immediately influences the body's significant nervous system. Over time, meth use may also completely harm the mind cells that produce dopamine, as well as those that produce serotonin, every other mind chemical that performs a function in our experience of pleasure. When you're high on meth, you may feel like being extra effective and efficient than your really are. <laughs> Caitlin is wild, very outspoken. She had a very good job as a nurse, and she's very witty. She's a smart girl. She is a caring, helpful person. She, she would go out of her way to help you if you needed help. She would save you. Now she can't do that. She can't save herself. My name's Caitlin. I'm 27 years old. I'm addicted to I stayed up just to see when all of the faces do the one next to me. You can't sleep, you can't eat, there's no doubt you're in deep. Your soul is tight, you can't breathe, and no the kiss. Is all you need releasing one of the happy chemicals, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, or endorphin. We want these good feelings all the time, but they are not meant to be on for no reason. They're designed to reward you with a good feeling when you do something good for your survival. Our brain defines survival in a quirky way, alas, 
which is why we all do quirky things to feel good. Our happy chemicals are inherited from earlier mammals and we control them with brain structures that all mammals have in common. The mammal brain can't tell you in words why it turns on the chemicals because it doesn't process language. When you know what turns them on in animals, everything makes sense. Dopamine surges in a monkey when it sees a fruit it can reach. Each step closer to a reward stimulates more dopamine. But the joy and excitement of dopamine stops when you get what you seek because it has already done its job. Then you have to do more to get more. The dopamine spurts of your youth built neural pathways that tell you how to turn it on today. These pathways helped our ancestors survive in a harsh world and today, they help you find rewards in ways that worked for you before. You can build new dopamine pathways to turn it on in new ways, but it takes a lot of repetition. Serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphin have their own jobs to do. Each surge builds the neural pathway that tells you to expect more good feelings in the same way. Each spurt is so short that you always have to do more to get more. Our brain evolved to promote survival, not to make you feel good. Nothing is wrong with you. Your happy chemicals are not designed to be on all the time. Ups and downs are natural, but you can build new pathways to enjoy more happy chemicals in new and healthy ways. What does the fox say?